If you want to pump your body and expand your mind, there's only one place to go. Mind Pump. Mind Pump. With your hosts, Sal Stefano, Adam Schaefer, and Justin Andrews. In this episode of Mind Pump, these are some of my favorite episodes. Every once in a while, we sit down and we have uh, a Q&A or something like that planned. Yeah, we smoke on the pipe. And uh, what? I don't know what he said. I don't know. Either. And uh, Jamaican. we end up going off on a tangent, and you know, then we'll look at Doug, and Doug's looking at us like, "Keep going," and we'll just keep going. And guys, you got something here. Uh, this episode was awesome. We talked about some cool stuff. Uh, we get into social media. Uh, we talk about the growth of the podcasting world um, and what it's going to look like in the future. We talked about uh, our sales awards uh, when we worked back at 24. You guys talked a lot about that. FF 24 Fitness. You love those days. And we talked about a couple guys that we knew that were absolute beasts when it came to production. Um, And then we get into just the business uh, of fitness. We get into, God, what did we talk about? We talked about gyms um, Mm -hmm. and what they were like back in the day and how they're moving forward now. future methods they're throwing out there. Uh, You know, we really got into just the stuff that really interests us today in terms of the fitness industry. So you get to kind of peer into our minds and sit in on a great conversation. Also, uh, we still have 30 days of coaching. It's getting revamped uh, all the time. You enroll uh, or register for it. It's free. And every single day you get new information on a particular topic related to fitness, wellness, or health. It's a great resource. It's a great way to introduce people into fitness. Um, Send it to friends that don't listen to Mind Pump. They'll get some good information in there. And we cover all kinds of topics, all the most important topics when it comes to fitness. Again, it's free, and you can find it at mindpumpmedia.com. Why Gary V uh, is, is better than us, right? There's, oh, let's yeah, let's talk about this. Well, here's the thing: he has this ability. If you pay attention to everything he puts out, right? So I don't know how old he is. Do you know how old he is? No, I don't. He's I, older I, than I us. Imagine he like he's, he's almost forty. Right? Yeah, he yeah. Like he's that. he's he's a little bit older than we are, right? So he's mm-hmm. got he's got he's got a little more wisdom on his side than we do. Mm-hmm. And then the the magical part about him that makes him so unique in comparison to other people that are in the same uh, arena as him is he has the ability to speak to the younger generation. You pay attention to, pay attention to the way he dresses. Yeah, it's a cool factor. His, yeah, too. absolutely. Yeah. He's got swag. Whether he, I don't know. Now, I don't know if he hired a team around him that has helped him do that. I haven't followed him long enough or paid. I don't attention. know, dude. I, we, you know, when you look at people that you think are actually cool, because you know you can put up this facade. Well, a hundred percent. We've experienced it, this, right? Yeah, for sure. We've experienced yeah, we this a lot. Like yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. we know we know a lot of people like that. It's 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 very common in in our business where. You know, we meet somebody who we were connected to through social media platforms, and that was our only real interaction, other than some phone calls, maybe text messages. And we do that for sometimes we court somebody for six months before they even come on the show. They come on the show, and then sometimes they're different than what that you are you you're being shown on you know social media. So yeah. you never know if that's a really good job uh, by the business that does as far as putting that person out there that way or they're genuinely that, like fucking cool. You yeah. know it too right away though well, when they I come in. By, at this time with all these videos of him and like everybody following him like I think you'd you'd figure out if like you know that was coached. You, you know like he, he has to actually uh, be like authentic with the way he carries himself. I, I, I don't he know. Seems, he seems authentic. Yeah. Yeah. Here's the thing. Like, you can see the way a dude walks. I don't know, bro. man. Right. I can tell the way someone walks. I don't know about him very well, but uh, I've been to a couple of these um, internet marketing like conventions and seminars where you get some of these like people you've never heard of, but who literally run the internet marketing world. Mm-hmm. And they talk about strategies of how, like when you do a Google search, like if I look up Adam Schaefer, right? How many searches come up on a, on a front page of, of Google? What is it, like 10? Like 10 whatever? Uh-huh. They'll teach you ways to make sure that everything that comes up on that first page is something that you own. Mm. So your persona is what you've created online. Yeah. And they're very, very good. People that know how to do this, well, this know, is like, I get this that. Is, this is SEO 101, but that's, yeah, that's even that, even that's evolving and changing, bro. That well, was like yeah. four well, four years ago. Well, you, can, you can claim, you know, you can wear all these clothes and you can have all these things and all that stuff, but like, that's not it. Like, it, it's how you project yourself and like how you talk and like how you relate to well, people. But, but you're on video and you're creating this persona. It's it's interesting. I think it's going to be more, di- I think it'd be more difficult to not be 
authentic. I think it's already starting to happen. Here's yeah. a, here's yeah. a deal. People like oh, it's stressful, dude. You got to understand about that. You got to understand this. Like what you're talking about right now. Like this is why Gary. This is what makes Gary V so badass too. He has he's a he evolved faster than most people are still talking about that, bro. That's not that's old. Like think about what we know where YouTube is going, right? Just think of this. Think think of this logically. What you're talking about right now is like SEO shit, right? Being able to hit say put anything that's related to fitness and boom, mind pump pops up at the front of a front page of every Google. Well, that's great, but what is pat what's going to pass Google by next year? Yeah. What's for YouTube? for YouTube. searches you but- YouTube. Yeah. So, look at the type of stuff that he puts out there on video, okay? For for people on on Well, for, it's not just on- that. I'm not even saying that. I'm just saying when you're talking about cool and this cool factor and making yourself look a particular way, I think uh, it's it, it can't be manufactured like it used to be. It has to be that's why just he, what you are, but but put out in a very professional. That's why when I look way. at that's why when I look at him, I feel like it's genuine. Like yeah, I I right. feel like I can I can tell like and I haven't met the man, so I don't know. I'm just speculating yeah. right now. But I feel well, either like, way, he's yeah, he's tricking both of us at that point, right? Right, if he right, is. right. So well, it, I mean, uh, it's a really good job in business world. Does it matter? I yeah, mean, that's like, what I mean. It doesn't if matter. That, if someone perceives yeah. you that way, that's all yeah. that matters, really. Yeah, yeah. You've accomplished. Yeah. Whether you're fake well, or but real. But I mean, you're, you're also hanging on to one little thing that I said. It's not just that. I mean, there's a lot of things that he's doing. That I mean, even just from the, the choice of music that's played, that's not fake or anything like that. It's just being smart. It's like understanding what the younger generation is listening to, looking at, shopping mm-hmm. for. Pay- those little details fucking matter. So here's what's interesting about internet statistics. Uh, it used to be that the largest users uh, of internet-based uh, whatever, media, products, all that stuff, was the youth. But the fastest growth that they're seeing and that they've been seeing is actually in the older generations because the youth always grab onto tech very quickly. But like Facebook, for example, is becoming dominated by people who are you know 25 uh, and up. Um, and fa- fa- Facebook, although it's not cool like... Instagram or Snapchat or anything like that, it still kills all of them. It's in terms of revenue production, in terms of, did you guys see that Facebook just hit 2 billion users? 2 billion. 2 billion users. They literally have, I mean, if every one of those was real and active, because of course you need to have to wash all that stuff out. They literally have almost one third of the world's population on Facebook. And if you're, if you want a consumer the consumer you're aiming for is between 25 to 35. They're ones that have money, they're going to buy stuff, and you're seeing the growth happen in that. And then the older generations, like these dating apps, for example. Here's a great example. Dating uh, websites um, in the beginning when they first came out were dominated by younger people. But the ones that are dominating now are starting to become are the older people because they just take longer to. to you know, you just gave me a thought. You know who I want to interview? I want to interview the guy who was responsible for turning the monetization on for Facebook. I want to know what that was like. <laughs> yeah, the first day you've been holding him back right. forever. He's like, "Come on, man, come yeah, on, you're right? Let me go, <laughs> right? We'll kill I this." I want to talk yeah. to that motherfucker yeah. and what that did. Like, no, you, no, we still have to be cool. Right, right. Could you imagine? How how much how much just started coming in at once? I like I, there has to it has to be insane to yeah. just well they actually in the beginning like the they floodgates. had they actually had to figure it out because when they first started monetizing, it wasn't what see, their their value was on their potential like most tech stocks right when they first come out everybody's like oh its potential is huge but you look yeah. at their actual numbers and it doesn't reflect it but you're kind of taking a guess right so Facebook had to figure it out they were the first ones to kind of figure out. How we're gonna make money? It's like Google. Google had to figure it out too, right? Right. When yeah. they first came out. So, but you know, I'm looking at. So we're in the podcasting world, right? Which, by the and way, I'm looking at. Watch why. What I love talking about this stuff is that's what we're doing. Yeah, we're, we're in exactly. it. We're in an industry. Although it's nine years old, really, it, it has in the last four year, four to five years, has it really turned into a potential business for people where they can actually get a large enough network. Well, there's of- no mega business in fitness. I mean. People might think Nike is a mega business, like fitness no, business. No, it's an apparel company. It's a apparel company. Yeah, yeah, no, definitely not. Well, so we're, we're going to see shoe, shoe close shoe company, to that. Technically. Yeah, but there's plenty of room for that to happen. Well, the podcast world is very interesting because podcasts, a lot of people don't realize podcasting has been around for a long time. Uh, it's actually been around for longer than most, uh, at, like it's been long, it's been around longer than Facebook. It's been around podcasting, but it's an old medium. 
and it was only like the the most tech savvy. Is, is older than, I don't think it's older than Facebook. Pat podcasting? Yeah. Oh, absolutely. What it was was you always would, on the computer. It was yes, different. Yeah, 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 yeah. But podcasting, oh, okay. it's just. What's made it grow was its availability and use. And uh, the mobile phones really exploded the use of, of podcasts. Podcasts has been growing steadily since 2006. So right now, about uh, 30, the, the, out of the, this is a, these are statistics from Edison Research, 36% of the population above the age of 12 has listened to or listens to a podcast. That's 98 million people, which is a lot more. In 2006, it was 11%. Um, and it's been growing so at about- So how much, how much did that change? Tell, go back up right From there. 11% in 2006 to 36% uh, Oh, wow. today. so triple. Mm. But you saw a big jump when like uh, iPhones and stuff that's like that. That's a triple over nine, how many years? How many years? Uh, that's like nine years, uh, 10 years. 10 years. 10 years. Uh, and it, it's so far, it's clipping along at a three, between three to 4% growth rate, which is pretty good considering most people uh, listen to their podcast, um, believe it or not, a large chunk still listen on their computer. Which is funny. Really? Yeah. But so in 2016, I'm surprised by that. trip off this, right? So in 2016, so that's just last year, almost 30% of podcasts were listened to on a computer. Huh. 71%. Like all at the workplace. Yeah. 71% on their smartphone or tablet or portable device. Now, the places to listen to a podcast, 53% at home. Only twenty one percent in a car. Oh wow! Now what's about to change big oh, time? Yeah, oh, that's, that's yeah, the car for yeah. sure. Once they start it's putting them in all of them, like the Teslas, it's going to be that's it. Oh, Once yeah. it's going to be put in the because right now it's a pain in the ass. Like if I want to listen to something on my phone to play to my car, I got to connect the two. Yeah, and you have like a Bluetooth. auxiliary cable or yeah, Bluetooth. and I got a Bluetooth. Yeah, like I only listen in the Denali when I drive the Mercedes or the Corolla. Both those require an auxiliary connection. I yeah, won't even yeah. listen. I'll never listen if I'm driving that vehicle, which is a lot. Part of the reason why I've been driving that car so much is just because of that reason. Mm-hmm. That's and, funny. Because it's a fucking, yeah, yeah. I would, When I had the Jeep and then I just switched, you know, like now I have Bluetooth. I'm like, oh God, this is yes. So, so well, a lot of people have still got to catch up to that. They right? do. So once, and, and even if you have Bluetooth, you still have to go to your phone, tr- put on the app, hit play, and then the car goes on. And people don't realize uh, that small, stupid yeah. steps like that Dude, any, make a any huge small difference. little step. If, if you have any kind of online business or anything like that, like you have to think about all these little nuanced things. People why, are so finicky. Why do you think Amazon? Crazy. Why do you well, think Amazon destroys four, everybody? They're the four, masters at four that. Four year old should be able to understand yeah. it. Two year old should be able to do it. That's it. Yeah. I mean, this is why Just one click and then ship. That's right? it. That's this is why Amazon so, destroys so people because yeah. literally. You can click buy now. Was that you who and sent that over in our I thread? The thread? They have a new thing. They're a new thing where it just remembers all your common your common patterns. And you just swipe. <laughs> boop, boop, swipe. boop, yeah, and it, it memorizes your habits, your common patterns, and then it sends it to you, and then it's just, do you want it right See, now? It's, it's creepy, it. but awesome at the you same just, time. You just yeah, buy, yeah, buy, yeah. buy, 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 and it's very just, easy. Yeah. So my point with this is, with podcasting, if you're in the podcasting world, that, it's about to fucking explode because once people can turn their car on, and switch to a podcast right there like you would a radio station or whatever, mm-hmm. you're going to see a whole new audience get introduced to podcasts. And a lot of the... So the the, the age of the average podcast lo- listener is uh, between like 25 and 54. Mm. And we're seeing a lot of growth. That's a wide range. Well, I uh, actually heard too that they're... Um, well, it's not, it's not the super young. Like we yeah. think like the super young, like 18, 19, 20. They're not the one... They do listen to podcasts, but most people who listen to podcasts are... The consumer, like what you consider the actual consumer that you want to target, right? The average podcast listener has be, uh, is more educated and earns more money, and I think that has to do with right now the fact that of the way you know it requires a little bit more savvy just to, to find a podcast and listen to it. Yeah. So we're about to open up to a whole new market. Well, what I was going to say is like, so I, I just heard that um, iPhones are going to become like dead in the car. So like, you yeah. know, yeah, so you can't use it. So um, that's, that's another thing that's like, okay, well, hopefully everybody has, you know, that Bluetooth connection or whatever that they can project it up to the, to the stereo. Uh, so to make that seamless. Well, I think all of the the new cars will look like Tesla, which yeah. looks like an iPhone mm-hmm. or an iPad. You know, yeah. it just literally you have all the same things from there, and mm-hmm. call everything is all connected straight through it. I mean, it's that's definitely the future of where most vehicles will look, and then it will. It'll be a lot. Then you'll see an increase in people listening to it during travel. Well, most- so here's what's cool, because you know how Adam, you always call us idiot servants. Servants. <laughs> <laughs> servants. Here's an interesting statistic. The average podcast listener, the sweet spot for how many podcasts they listen to per week. You want to guess? 
Uh, how many many shows they listen to per week? Five. 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 Mm. Wow. Five. How many episodes did we drop? I wonder if I read that. Yeah. Five. That was a horrible (laughs) guess. We own your podcast (laughs) listening. If I would like five episodes. Yeah, I'd probably be like three. Because I said we're idiots of servants. Got it. So you should have known that. Men, more men than women listen to podcasts. That I I was surprised by that. What? 56% to 44%. Uh, Uh, Yep. So hmm. it, uh, pretty pretty cool stuff. Um, and by the way, so here's an interesting statistic: um, podcast consumption. So this is from that same uh, that same site you has just, been substantially more common among Americans under the age of 25 until now. This was since 2016. For the first time, a larger percentage of 25 to 50 year olds listen to podcasts monthly, and that is growing faster. I'm telling you right now. Hmm. Internet and, and the internet has been dominated by the young because it was the young just uh, they just grab things really quickly. But if you for historically in America, the key age demographic that you want to adver- trickle up, so to speak. Well, the key age demographic that buys shit is like, what do they say? The 25 to 35. That's the that's like the magic, uh, you know, uh, age that all advertisers really try to target because that's where that's the age that Bot does the most buying and has the most yeah, um, the expendable early income. adopters. Yeah, yeah, and you're seeing that uh, that, and then even older. There's also more. There's, there, yeah, but there's more variables nowadays that that you have to consider now. Those type of stats you're rambling off, or so nowadays uh, something that's likely to go viral or be shared is more likely to be done by someone between the ages of 19 and 23. So there's there's numbers and stats now to counter that that way of thinking before it's a, it's it's, a whole new what's, world man. what's what's unique now is and what i think is funny when people love people ask me this question all the time like i remember when we, especially when we first started building like what's your niche you know who's your who's your give me your your demographic or your oh, yeah. your avatar you know give me your yeah, avatar dead. and i'm like fuck that like why why am i only going to appeal to one type of person in a certain age group fuck that why can't yeah. you listen to me at 17 and all the way up to 65 you and probably have to be 18 yeah. or older but, but yeah. But what I do see, what I do see value in is this, and I've been telling you guys for quite some time that I believe the future is segmenting the show. And, you know, talking about these stats right now, how cool would it be, right, for us to take a poll? Our forum would be a great place to do this. You say five shows is the average. I, we know already, because I know we've seen our forum talk that they all listen to other podcasts also, would be to see, uh, have them all list, like what other podcasts you consistently listen to, then extra, uh, extract, extract, Okay. Extrapolate. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was just instead okay. of fucking up right yeah. there, right? <laughs> so I wanted you to create something new. You ex- was, come you on, man. Then, then you was exacerbate. A, uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you, you see my brain working over here? Just you just hurt gone with it, bro. <laughs> smoke come out Next of time, go with it. Yeah. Uh, that's what we get when we So sm- you pull that smoke. out. So you pull that out, and we separate all of them, and then we could start to see what what genres like so like let's say 20% of our forum actually listens to mind pump and then also a business development type podcast mm. uh 33% listen to a pure comedy podcast 42% listen to a finance podcast so we can actually s- figure mm, that like out idea, yeah. and then when we actually start to segment our shows we can start to think about that when we either one produce others on those days so people can listen so we can start mm. going for types of genres or we can even gear our own personal message right. around those topics, and then you begin to naturally segment the show. It's a, it's a, it's a very interesting... Uh, I mean, if you're at all into business or human uh, just psychology, because I, I, I like business, but I like human psychology, and they're both kind of the same. Um, it's fascinating when you look at uh, technology and how it's shifting and changing uh, just the landscape. Like Some of the most viewed videos on YouTube period, end of story, are these fucking videos that little kids, little tiny kids who don't have credit cards or anything, watch. Now, that makes you kind of wonder, like, sure, this video of this woman opening up this, uh, you know, this box and playing with a toy, because believe it or not, those videos get tens of millions of views. Sure, it gets a ton of views, but does it convert to anything? Because you've got all these five-year-olds watching it, Well, right? so this oh, is how that... Like, what's so the, ad space. What's the value, though? You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I, mean, I know it has some value. So unpack that, right? So if you uh, uh, read the book that I just finished, what was that book? Hitmakers? Yeah, Hitmakers. <laughs> Fuck you. I, I got your back. I know, today, thank bro. you. I need your help today. You know you got sure. problems with well, this. Well, I wasn't sure we were going to record right now, but since we're we're on this topic, <laughs> I think this is great. Oh, it's on. So it, Hitmakers talks about like, okay, so if you were to unpack that, how they how does that lady or that, that kid that's unpacking or that's uh, doing the presence gets the 5 million views, what's likely happening is 
um, w- somebody like uh, Will Smith and um, you know some other these celebrity parents that have a child that's the same age that owns an iPhone and has YouTube finds that and then they post that on their Instagram or share that on their Twitter and because they're popular kids because they're mm. they're they're the kids of Will Smith and then when there's six or seven of those kids they get influenced at school you know Susie over and then here they, and, and because the everybody. whole school follows that kid because that's Will Smith's son or whatever. I'm just using that as an analogy. I have no fucking clue how old his kid Somebody is. Somebody has to make it popular. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. You think, now here's the thing. And that's how that happens. Here's what's, so. here's it's, what's it's fast. Else. And here's then after those people, guess what? Those yeah, uh, Somebody influential. Yeah, for th- sure. absolutely. Usually, usually, of course. But what's interesting to me with the young, young kid videos, because I, like I said, my daughter's seven, and then I have like, co- like cousins and nieces and nephews that are even younger. What's interesting, like nobody's ever heard of some of these videos at all. And I think what they're doing is they're really doing a good job of showing something that the kid wants to click on almost. Like, I don't, like, I, don't, I know my five-year-old uh, nephew, yeah. he doesn't fucking give a shit who's going to tell him what. He goes on YouTube and what they well, do yeah, that's part, is they search. That's part of the formula too, though. It's not, it's not one thing. It's not just so-and-so. Why did Will Smith's kids, you know, share it in the first place? Because it was fucking cool. You know, it was a cool video, colors, it drew their, yeah, whatever drew his attention to want it. He's going to want to share it. So there's also, mm-hmm. the, you can also break down and unpack what makes somebody want to share something. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You so know, there's there's ways to fix. So there is a, a formula to making something that is more likely to get shared. But at the end of the day, it's all about those influencers that that share it. I mean, it's that's not a, by accident. I no. mean, it, 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 and when you break and you unpack all these like specific videos down, you can go to like the angle mm. and the lighting and, you know, the way that it's staged and the icon of it. And yeah, who, who the average, influential. The average podcaster in general uses, I was looking at this, I don't remember what the number is now, I just closed my phone, but. The average podcaster uses social media more often and longer. It's basically more connected to that world of uh, of business, to, to the internet world of business. What's what's interesting to me is it wasn't that long ago. You can actually Google this. You can look up what uh, like YouTube looked like five years ago, what the average internet you know web page looked like ten years ago, and it looks archaic. Just five or ten years ago, you look at it and go, "Wow, it, that's how fast it's changing." Dude, it's a matter of time. It's a matter of short time before having individually produced podcasts like we're doing here where we just started it in Doug's living room or whatever. That's going to be a thing of the past. Like, I think it's going to be like these super highly produced like YouTube channels. Mm-hmm. It's not going to be like people who are good and smart with using apps and stuff. I think you'll still see some of that stuff, but man, it's going to keep getting yeah. better and better. I have a feeling oh, it's, that uh, it might get dominated or by some of that you stuff. you could bing it. Well, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like whoever it's, has said that ever. It's know. here now. Being it, man. It's here now. It's already happening. We were just a part of it. So, we, we, you know, there's, and we're so buried in our own stuff that we don't have time to be out shopping around and looking. But if you really pay attention, your companies like Nike and Under Armour and, you know, whatever, some big soap company, Chevy, what all these companies now have YouTube channels and they're just now learning. The, how to do it when they first came out like if you look and I have no idea because I haven't been on this so I'm just totally just throwing bullshit out right now but I'm pretty sure I'm pretty confident if you were to look at <laughs> you know throw it at me. Yeah. if you were to look at you know these big companies now most of their YouTube channels are pretty fucking cool they've yeah. actually spent time making it for the right platform well when, four years ago when those big companies came into YouTube they would be just doing they were they were repurposing already content that they were doing a commercial they and actually just, have new yeah. content for their own right exactly Exactly. Because yeah, have important. you seen have you seen commercials for big brands that are only shared online? Yes. That have like cursing in them. You know or, who? Do you remember more edgy? Oh, do you yeah. remember who? Yeah, do you yeah, remember yeah, yeah. who? Do you remember who? One of the first companies, in my opinion, I think that did that so well. It mm. was the the dirty balls, the dirty balls, uh, and the the um. It was old, not old Axe. Axe, oh, Axe, yeah, Axe, 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 yeah, yeah, I remember yeah, that yeah commercial. I agree Axe, with you. Axe, and then Old Spice followed yeah, up with they, that. Then Old Spice copied them, a bunch of people. But that was a YouTube. That was yeah. not. They didn't do a commercial. It was like super low budget. They did. They did that, and it it went bananas. Yeah. And so now, now, and then you started to see big companies after that start to kind of follow suit a little bit. But that was only like. Yeah, I mean, maybe five years ago now. I can't remember when that first came out. Maybe a little bit more. I'm forget. You know, it's maybe it's been like seven years. I don't remember when it was when that first came out. We could probably look it up. Mm. But that was when you really started to see this change. Mm. And soon, it will be very hard for somebody like us, who is 
just there's nothing there's nothing famous about any of us there was nothing that we none of us did anything yeah. fucking super spectacular I know. to for people to tune in and listen to you i did one time but nobody was there to see it. <laughs> i was gonna say damn it, it. I feel so, nobody so saw deflated. it only we know we're yeah. cool yeah. right yeah. so yeah. like we're, we're all right you know? so we're good you know so soon it's it Companies like that will hire anybody. Even ha- if if you were if we were if you would consider us talented at what we do, we would be hired by somebody like that. They would go like, "Oh, these three knuckleheads are now going to work for Nike," and they would, you know, what I'm saying, Don't forget like, the fourth you, knuckle- you're, you're going to run our podcast. <laughs> you're going to run our podcast. Yeah. So you know, that's that's. I, th- what- I think it's all cool, man. I think um, it's going to be interesting to watch. I'm glad we got in when we did, because if it does what we think is going to happen with the world of like, just specifically speaking, podcasting. Um, you know, if we just keep doing what we're doing and kind of hang on, it'll grow along with it. Because although, it lo- I mean, 98 million Americans have listened to a podcast, every single day I talk to people and I'll bring a podcast and be like, well, what's that? How do I get on yeah. it? Like, how do I, what is that? Where's the icon? How does that work? Like, imagine when that becomes easy and it becomes like, you well, know. just an audible medium, you know, so it, there's always going to be a need for that, you know, like for, for people to consume because like they're going to be doing things with their hands. They're going to be like, you know, like working or going around the house or doing errands or whatever. And it's like, you know, we can follow you the whole way. It'll, you know, <laughs> we're there. It'll be like when we saw with newspapers, like who the hell reads a newspaper nowadays? Yeah. Have you guys seen the San Jose Mercury News? Recently. No. no. Does that still exist? So the San Jose Mercury News. Is it like the news like I see on TV now where they report yeah. about Twitter? <laughs> it's a picture of <laughs> this morning on Twitter. Yeah. It's like, are it's you trending me now? Right now? That's Dude, crazy. The San Jose Mercury News used to be an award winning newspaper in the country. It used to be a well renowned, like yeah, yeah. one of the better ones. It yeah, was yeah. thick too. It was a big newspaper, with lots of stuff to read. It's like three pages in ads now. It's like nothing anymore. It's fucking a shell of its old self. It'll probably not exist. Yeah. Uh, once this generation that reads newspapers still dies, which <laughs> everybody that gets it now is like, oh, it's kindling. That's what's gonna, that's what's going to happen with radio. Yeah, it's already happening with radio. Oh, radio and TV. Yeah, or it's just they're just yeah. going to be gone. That's yeah. so crazy. That's why I see like like companies like Nike. This will become a whole department or company within itself. Will be like the social media part of the business, and you see, oh, com- yeah. you see it already. It'll be it's. You'll have a network. It's like what we're we talk about. What we're building. It just takes a long time to Actually, build that. Actually, speaking of build pod- it from the ground yeah. up, if we were Nike and you came in with your 10 brand mil- is like yeah. a person. Yeah, you know, yeah. ten million dollars. It has a podcast. It has a YouTube. It Actually, has all these things. Speaking of podcasting, Doug found uh, there's an award thing that they do every year for podcasting. It's been going on for ten years. Is that the podcast podcasting the hardest podcast awards. I want to get yeah. the. No, I, I thought get it the- was like podcast movement or something like that. No, I think it's podcast. Choice. Yeah, let's find that. So there's a there's an award there's actually an award show, and oh podcast awards, um, you found it? Yep, podcastawards.com. So it's been going on for ten years. Yeah, and they give away like awards like the Emmys or whatever to podcasts. We want a trophy. So here's the I thing. I did it, mom. Here's the thing. I want to fucking win, dude. I want to think. I want to uh, win. I don't want to do this unless we win, dude. All the people. I want to fucking win. I don't want to so do it unless we if win. we don't win. Adam will eat his hat. I'm gonna so, I'm gonna Kanye West it and just yeah. get in front of yeah you know Adam should have won yeah so Adam yeah I, he's th- the best yeah you did a good job and everything but yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> they had the best podcast yeah. so podcastawards.com you go on there register yourself and then vote for Mind Pump in the People's Choice Award and in the category of health mm. uh, because this is like podcasting hard dude. What do you mean? Yeah. <laughs> Podcasting hard? Yeah, yeah. It, just, it just feels Hashtag. funny. Yeah. Yeah. Ah! Podcasting yeah, still hard. Build, we're still building that. Push we're gonna, out We're going to try and get an award out of this thing. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we've been doing it. Yeah, okay, we're, yeah. we're in the trenches. I'm the stepping my trenches. Stepping my game. And you know what now. it is, dude? Now yeah. that we're, uh, we're up for an award. Yeah. <laughs> Oh yeah. shit! You know what's you know what's funny about this is that because I've never I never you're, you're, I we should open this. with a new epic voice. Like, yeah. Do you still do you Bob. still have any of your glass trophies? They podcast do you still hard. have yours? Uh, oh, from twenty four. Yeah, I have no. I'm not exaggerating. I have two big like big moving boxes full to the rim, and they're uh, I think they're at my ex's house, and they're just covered in uh, in dust. So. I, I have, have so many. It's ridiculous. I have trophies. I have a, a yeah. bend too at my house. I thought that would be pretty. Well, maybe one day we'll take them all out. You only Which, get two. 
Okay. You know what we should do? Because we should bring, bring him bring in. And... All of my athletic achievements. No, not to <laughs> get ridiculous in here. We're not talking about sports. Uh, whatever. Yeah. <laughs> whatever, Mister. Obviously, motor mouth. I have yeah. a bunch of trophies. Yeah. They're not. Yeah. But I want to bring them in. Motor mouth awards. You know what we should do? We should bring them in and we should count them all to see how many. I don't work as long as you guys did for twenty four. I was only with them for. Oh, don't start making excuses. Come, right? come well, on, no, no, dude. Just to show this guy. No, no, just to show scale because people are like, "Wow, Sal has more awards." Then you count. I was only there for two and a half years. Whoa. Uh, <laughs> that's a lot of awards. No, I, I, what was the best thing you won uh, at 24? Did you? Oh, was company. it the Hawaii trip? Well, no. I mean, well, Hawaii- he was man. I didn't win any management awards because I, you know, I was there for like a minute. But yeah, like in the company, you know, number one in the company. Yeah, but I'm saying, did you do? Because you, they used to have contests too, where they give away a TV or they give away this. They trip stopped or- doing that shit. It was in the early days, huh? Yeah, man. I missed the, all of that. Didn't dude. you win a Hawaii trip, Adam? Seven times. You went to Hawaii with uh, 24 Fitness seven yeah, times? Yeah, I missed wow. like the last one. Yeah. yeah. And then I was like... Ugh. I know the, the last two that I didn't go to, I mean, don't get me started on that. That was when they, they started to do this thing, right? Because the company was always making it tougher for you to hit goal. Make, of course. Right, right. right. That's how they pay you always us. moving the target, right? <laughs> it didn't matter though. Competitive guys like us would be like, ah, fuck it. I'll oh, still I'll figure still it out. crush. Yeah. Right? And so every year they made it harder. Well, the final two years where I didn't go, it no longer was uh, in my hands. It was now... If you and your general manager, the sales side, average this, oh, shit. so because my bull and and I busted my I ass. I feel like they made that specifically yeah. because you guys. I like remember you. us <laughs> helping the entire sales side of the of, yeah. of the gym. My trainers try and make yeah. My that. trainers were were over there. Uh, yeah, we selling, were selling for deals, them, closing deals yeah, for the sales council. Closing deals like, for the sales council. I was like, fuck these guys, they suck so bad. I'm like, you uh, guys, I'm gonna ask. I need your help. I just go, came to my trainers That's and said, embarrassing. yeah, what you guys have to say was way embarrassing. So one one my favorite thing that I ever did it wasn't an award was uh, this is uh, just something that happened when uh, Santa Teresa the club there was two grand openings for it. There was the like the grand opening where people can go in and do some stuff, but it wasn't fully done. And then there was the official grand opening, which, so I was the manager for the official, like big, you know, grand opening. But the first grand opening where they actually opened the doors, uh, the district, uh, was it the district manager? No, the, the, the vice president, I believe it was the VP invited his top general managers from the region to go to the club and compete for top salesperson for the day. So you've got a bunch of killers going in there who manage their own big clubs and we're going there and it's pride on the line. And then last minute he says $500 cash and he pulls out 500, you know, uh, five $100 bills and puts them down and goes, and whoever wins gets $500. So it was me and all these managers guys come out. Yeah. Me and all these managers. And it was about, uh, it was about to go down to see who can out sell who. Right. Right. And I fucking like, it wasn't even like it was me. And then, Second place was like half. It was and like the, watching and, Usain Bolt. And the way I killed them was two things. I had two strategies that always made me, this made me effective as an AGM too when I was just a sales guy. Was A, I could take it, I, I could see a customer walking in before they parked the car. So I could fucking, Mercedes. And I'd zero in. And number two, uh, I had a quick, I could do a quick sales process and I could work the floor better than anyone. So when I didn't have a guest, I was working the floor and Did I was you selling, steal all the balloons and I was selling them? personal training like crazy. Yeah. And uh, I won that. And then I used that to talk shit to everybody for ever. Still now, if you're listening <laughs> now, I beat you. Yeah. I, yeah. yeah. That was something I Squashed. thought about forever. Who would, who would you attribute like, uh, m- most of the sales skills that you have to like, is there a single person? Obviously I know you that you, you pick up from anybody and everybody you ever worked with, but was there a single person that impacted you the most? There were two people that I worked with, uh, three people, uh, let me think. One, two, three, maybe. Yeah, three people who, uh, two of which worked for me and one of which I worked for that pushed me um, to, to get better because I was very natural at it. So it was easy. And so um, I took that for granted. Like I think anybody, right? If you do something and it comes easy, you tend to take for granted that you could get better by honing your skill or whatever. The first guy was Don Cardona, who was my general manager and then became my district manager later on. And the, the way he pushed me was he would fuck with me. So when he was my manager, I was uh, an AGM, an assistant manager for a little while when I transitioned from fitness. And I was just, I was doing numbers nobody has seen. I was doing forty and $50,000 in production and in uh, commissionable uh, revenue every month back when the second and third place were in the 20 and maybe 30,000 range. So it was just blowing people away. So what he would do with me is he would fuck with me and literally... 
the day would start and he'd ask me shit that he knew the answer to. So he'd say, Sal, let me see your planner. Remember the stupid planners that we had? <laughs> <laughs> Knowing yeah. you didn't fill it out. I didn't yeah. fucking do a planner. <laughs> yeah. And he'd, and so, Highlighting green here. Yeah. Highlighting and he'd be like, there. oh, you didn't fill yeah. this out. You get, you get no guests today at all. So then for the whole day, I'd have to figure out how I can make sales without getting any walk-in guests. So I'd only get appointments or I'd have to work the floor. So I'd have to be really, really creative. And there was a couple times I got in trouble because like one thing that I did was I'd go on lunch, but in reality what I'd do is uh, I'd stand around the front of the gym and I'd see who was walking in. I could tell when they were a guest and I'd hand them a guest pass with my name on it. So when they come in, they'd be like, oh, I'm here to see Sal. And I'd walk in, oh, I have a guest. Uh, yeah, he threw a calculator through the wall when, that, when he found that out. But anyway, um, it, may, it pushed me really well early on in my career. And then when I How had, old are you at that time? I'm 18 or 19. Oh, fuck, you're young right Then there. I had uh, Jason Marcucci work for me, who you guys know uh, mm. very well. I know Adam, you know him very well. You know what's funny? I've been meaning to br- bring him up on the show. He would be fun to bring down here and talk. Oh my God, dude. I'm afraid f- of what he would say. You know, yeah. the, I'm would, afraid of having Yeah, I want to hear his stories. No, I don't oh. know. Uh, yeah, oh, he's yeah. got him on you guys. For so sure. Mar- yeah, he's just a great dude. So Mar- too. Marcucci was, he worked a uh, very, very short period of time for Don Cardona when Don was a general manager at Sunnyvale. And I had run my first club, which was Salinas. Then I get Sunnyvale, the flagship club. I walk in. Marcucci's only been a counselor, a sales guy, for a month maybe. And I walk in, and here's this fucking dude. So back then, when we were selling memberships or or running the gyms or being trainers, the uniform was sweatpants, a purple polo shirt, and tennis shoes. So we looked like fitness people. Was it Fila days? No, this is before Fila. (laughs) Purple? This is before Fila. Uh, Before Fila? uh Uh-huh. So we had sweatpants uh, that we could wear whatever sweatpants we wanted as long as they were a particular color. I think it had to be black. So it could be whatever you wanted. And then purple, like old school 24 fitness shirt. I walk in, and here's this fucking kid. And Marcucci was young. He was... Is he our age? He's he's between me and you. Yeah. So he was. So he. So I, me. So I walk in as a manager of Sunnyvale. I'm 20. He's 19. So he's a young, just champion, right? I walk. <laughs> just champion. I walk in. And did he walk in with? A, did he have the personality that he's always? Dude, that I me, know him hold as. Hold on a second. Let me just explain. Let me just tell you the story of the. Literally, this is the first day I met Jason Marcucci. I walk. You're, in, you're the GM at the time. I'm the new GM. Brand new. New GM. I walk in early. I have a meeting, all staff meeting, like 10 a.m. or something like that. So I walk in at 8 a.m. 15 minutes later, this fucking kid walks in with his purple polo shirt on, slacks, expensive, like snakeskin shoes. <laughs> like Ferragamos? Yes. Yeah. That's so jay. Hold on. Hold on. I'm not done. Uh, and a briefcase. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Briefcase. Perfect. Jason did not have a briefcase. Uh, I swear to God. No, it's I like my cousin Vinny. Yeah. <laughs> He walks yeah. in. He wa- and you see. So you know him so well. You know what? You so know that, that's exactly what he would do. Oh, I totally believe. You know what's awesome about that is anybody who knows anything about the gym industry too. Like one of the biggest, I think the biggest <laughs> or most awesome. common questions ever asked. Right? Because I've given probably I don't know thousands of interviews over the ten years, and everybody always asks, "What do I have to dress like?" Because you know that in the gym life, it's pretty much like sweats and a yeah, polo it's shirt casual. it's pretty casual like so if you're a young kid fresh out of college you're kind of concerned like do i need a suit up for yeah. this or not most people actually don't even ask and they actually show up in sweats every once in a while i, ha- I would have somebody show up dressed nice yeah. but definitely never had anybody oh, no. roll up with a oh, no. briefcase he comes to work he comes yeah. to work, he's got a briefcase oh, and he's so got good. slacks on and shoes on and he's like he you know i'm like hey how you doing and he Puts out his hand. He's a 19-year-old kid, and he looked like a 19-year-old. Marcucci still looks like he's got this baby face. He puts his hand down. He's like, hey, how you doing? He goes, all right, man. I'm here to make some money. Like, those little- <laughs> <laughs> Did you really say that? Oh, dude. I, like, I, looked, at him. Love Jay. I looked at him like, this is, he's, he's going to be a monster. And, and Marcucci was a nightmare, a nightmare for most people to manage because he is the kind of person you had to put a chain on him. 100% and has ADD, You had, ADD, to, for you had sure. to hold him Un- back. You had to hold him back because if you didn't, he would break every rule. 
He would <laughs> he would go he would do crazy shit. In fact, <laughs> he worked for me twice. The first time was at Sunny. He was nuts. He was so I was always pulling him back. Like you can't do that. You can't do that. Don't say that. And but he was a he would crush. He was breaking. You know what records. you mean? But you should explain to the listeners what you mean by that because when you're it, back then it was very car salesy. So you could write your own prices and then oh I'm going to cut it by fifteen <laughs> percent or oh I'll throw this in for free. Like we had a lot of flexibility. No, back no. Then, Marcucci right? would make up barbecue. He would sets going he would out. tell stories and shit and I'm and you know they were harmless. List, but they were obviously bullshit. And they were lies, <laughs> and it was just like, "What do you do?" Like, and I would talk to him about this kind of stuff. But he was always had to put a leash on him. The second time he worked for me, this is not a joke, by, by the way. Now I'm at Santa Teresa. This is years later. Twenty Four Fitness has tried to mature. They have they bring on this HR department. They try and every have these meetings. Okay, guys, you got to say mm-hmm. this. You can't say it this way. Everybody's got to be perfect. Whatever. I bring Marcucci back on board because I'm like he's a killer. I want him on my team. But I had this talk with him. I sat him down in my office and I said, "Listen, I said it's not like it used to be, dude. You used to, you used to do crazy shit, and I used to <laughs> hold you back. I said if you do crazy shit now, they'll fire you, and I can't do anything about it. Like I'm not, in, I don't have as much power as I used to have as a general manager, and I'll stand up for you if I can. But if I can't, you're fucked. Like so, be good. And you know, Marcucci, yeah, 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 yeah no problem. And so he'd fucking destroy numbers and crush or whatever. Anyway, I come in one day and fucking HR's there, dude. And they bring me in the office with the operations manager and they have fucking surveillance video of Marcucci climbing through the ceiling tiles, breaking into the operations manager's office to change the station. Because the music, (laughs) he didn't like the music because the music was boring. Now, here's why you don't do that. The operations manager has the money. Right, right. And if you break She's in there- She's got the safe, all the important files of all the clients and, and all, stuff. And of course, nothing was stolen. Marcucci wasn't a thief. He never was. But he got his, he got fired because he fucking- cl- And I remember sitting in my office with him looking at him like, you know why you got- Like, you know you made a stupid decision, right? He's like, oh, I know. you know. I know. <laughs> like, why the fuck did you do- He's like, the music was sucked. I'm like, I don't care, dude. It was country. I was <laughs> over it. But anyway, yeah. Marcucci pushed me- in the sense of being of having fun and getting creative and really brought up the atmosphere of the of the club. And then the third person that pushed me was uh, Larry Evans, who is Now back up real quick with the Jay, because I know this is a part of your personality and because I know both of you very well. Uh, is that something that you like before him? Were you less like that? Were you not like that? Because I feel like you have that trait about you now, where you have fun and like. Wh- I was, I was, all, I've always been like that. But it, when you see someone who's a master of it, and that was Marcucci, he's just a, he's a master of doing that. Uh, he's very intense, but he also is extremely creative and has a lot of fun and will bring the energy up uh, all around him. Uh, not even so much as a leader because he wasn't like he he wasn't very good at giving meetings and training and developing staff. That wasn't his thing. He was just he's just a killer. He's just contagious. Yeah. Like you have him in the room. If you go out with, we all going to go out one of these days. Oh, bro, I've yeah. been out with him in yeah. situations like that. It's the I'll tell you a story about going out with him. We went. Make once, sure it's one that he won't he won't get mad that you tell. <laughs> yeah, we're using on. his first and last. I know. Day. I know. Wait a second. Let me think. You'll yeah. be okay with this yeah, one. Yeah, yeah. Yes, <laughs> you'll be all right. This one. It, there was about I saw everybody else's names. There was about ten of us that all that were all going out, and I don't remember what it was, it, it, but it was a lot of the gym guys. So everybody fit good looking young guys all going out. It must've been a bachelor party or something. And we're actually like downtown San Jose and we come walk, walking in. And it, I mean, and you know how you, I, I know exactly what you're trying to explain right now because the moment we get out the car, he's on, he's already on. Like Jay is the loudest person talking to everybody, leading the way. Like, and I'm an outgoing forward person. Anybody who knows me knows I'm very loud, outgoing forward. Like I become like the, a shell of a man in this with oh, this dude, guy. You just can't, he just, he be, dominates that world. He's yeah. He's bigger. He's bigger he's than magician. life in that situation. We want, we come walking through, we're not even into the club. And then boom, there's this group of just a bunch of hot girls and they're like all bachelorette girls. They're getting going out themselves. And he walks up and starts to enter introduce us as some baseball team oh, and he yeah. starts going yeah, and he is awesome. just off the cuff introducing each of us our positions what we just did i mean he had this whole story that he had made up <laughs> and pre-planned oh it no it's not even pre-planned he just does this on the, right on the whim yeah like, i mean because he had no idea those girls you know, 10 girls yeah, like yeah, that yeah. many girls that many guys all of us and that is r- a gift right away he goes right up to the the baddest one starts talking to her all loud and introduces us all as i can't even remember what baseball team he said we were but then he starts going around introduce some players he's the catcher he's the pitcher this oh my oh, god, god he did this today like he's just that's so great i had a friend like that in chicago who 
who introduced us all as like we were on the bears because my my roommate was like humongous you know and so we had this whole backstory going into that and it was just like you know like the, the entire group of girls were just like what it, it's a skill dude it's yeah. a skill and although i'm i'm good at it i'm decent at it i i watched him yeah no Jace. and learned from it's a how, fearlessness. Yeah, and I'm not even talking about the bullshitting. It's just his energy. The dude's just fucking. He's like I said. He's he's a battery consistently. And, yeah, Cons- like in, I've never seen. I've actually never seen him. I've, and I've hung out with Jason a shit ton of times. I've never seen that guy slowing down. No, 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 <laughs> no, no, no. He's he's, yeah. he's it would trip me out to see him that way. He's unbelievable. Uh, he's an unbelievable Different RPMs. Yeah, yeah it's yeah. unbelievable. So. Uh, then the other, the, the third person was Larry Evans, who you're also, uh, you know, very well as well, Adam and Larry Evans was, uh, probably is, uh, the most talented salesperson naturally I've ever worked with, uh, in my entire life. He is, he's like, God, how would I explain it? Is it Dude, Kobe Bryant? He's like, no, you know who he reminds me of? He reminds me of the character played by, um, in Jerry Maguire. And and I always used to tell him this because I I used to whenever he, uh, he'd call me I, I love black people uh, I lo- I used to do that to him all yeah. the time and it was because mm-hmm. he wrote he's his character his personality is that he's the only guy I've ever met that is cock ten times cockier than I am and you still love him for it mm-hmm. like you he, it doesn't come it's so it's weird it's hard to explain but if you've ever met somebody that is is fucking as cocky as they can come, but it, every bit of it you enjoy, and it doesn't get annoying to you. No, so yeah. he he walked in, and uh, we started he's talented as fuck. Yeah. We, he walked in, he's he, and you know he interviewed at, or he tried to get a job as a sales guy at Capital, but they wouldn't even interview him. He came in to see me, and he told me that, and uh, he was wearing like a jersey, I think, a basketball jersey, and I said. All right, we'll we'll meet tomorrow. I said, show up like you want this job, and he fucking showed up like looking nice. We sat down, and Larry is just like I said, like you talk to him, and right away, right away, I could see this incredible talent in him. And so when I unleashed him, and that's literally what I did, is I unleashed him on the gym. And he was also a good student, so he was he was very very trainable as well in, in the sense that he wasn't so cocky. That Marcucci had this quality about him that I didn't like, where sometimes you couldn't tell him you know, what he did wrong and what he should do right because he'd battle you. Like, you'd have these fucking arguments with, with Marcucci, which I, I loved, but I also hated. Larry would sit there and he'd, he'd absorb it and then he'd put his own spin on it and he'd do it better than you did. <laughs> yeah. You know, Lord, he would end up... Great, he would end up Great doing, analogy, the two of them, for sure. He would do it better than you did. So, uh, watching Larry in the club sell memberships and sell training and sell whatever he wanted to, it was the first time in my life I truly felt like... I could go head to head against somebody, and I might not. I might not win. And I did a couple times. A couple times to really pull out the best in him, I would compete uh, against him. And he'll argue this, by the way, till this day. He'll argue it, but I've got fucking evidence, dude. We did it. <laughs> we had a closeout, and I told him, "Let's see who can like." Because we he would talk crap to him, like, "I'm I'm better than you were," and blah blah blah. Because he, you know, he talk. I talk about my heyday or whatever. And so we did a day where we went back to back, and um, maybe he did beat me. He did. We went back to back, and I beat him up until the last minute, and he had one guest come in. I think he beat me by like 10 bucks, and it was an awesome moment. He did beat me. That's right. And then I had this record as the, as the general manager for personal sales at 24 Fitness, which stood at, uh, I think it was like 44000 something in commissionable personal sales. So as a general manager, you're not really supposed to sell a lot yourself. Um, but they do encourage you to do it. Uh, just be a good example. And I had the record, and second place was like, like maybe nineteen thousand. Like nobody would ever get close to that. And I thought nobody would ever break that record. It was there for years. And the person to break it was uh, Larry Evans. He broke that record. So, dude, he those he, three people definitely to put in the perspective of those type of numbers. I'm glad you because that it like a normal like back then like what you had done was unthinkable, and it shifted the way the company. A lot of people don't know that, but a lot of how they started to do business was shifted by a lot of these guys because before that, like, and you know this because you were there back then, uh, personal training wasn't the the major focus. Like that was one of the first pieces that 24 Hour Fitness put in before, figured it out before anybody else did in the industry was 
if you sell them training, they have to get the membership. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And when they begin, and that was because and they'll got, get fit and they'll use the gym and they'll have a point of contact. I mean, it just makes sense, right? Right. And there's guy, there's guy, there were guys like you uh, and Larry and Jay back then that were the first ones to really start and do that. And before that, I mean, the numbers were like fifty percent of that. Well, no less. Consider consider yeah, it was this like a tenth, right? Consider it was this ridiculous. Hillsdale, long. which uh, in its heyday was producing over a hundred thousand dollars in one month of just personal training. Okay. And it's it, when I first became a trainer at Hillsdale, same club, same area, same everything. Their goal was thirteen thousand dollars total for personal training. Now for membership for for sales guys, if you sold over a thousand dollars of personal training a month, you were a god. Like right. you were fucking amazing. And I was coming in as a sales guy and I was blowing, you know, between fifteen to twenty five thousand dollars by myself in personal training. And that what it did is it changed. I was the first one to do it. It changed the atmosphere and how they started doing things. The sad thing is that they started reversing all that shit later on and turned into what they do now, which is uh, nowhere near uh, as you know revolutionary as they as they were before. Now it's just whole you know big box you know price war type of thing that I think has been a total disservice to the, to the industry. Oh, but. That's why they that's why they've been struggling for quite some time too. Is I mean I you I tell you what that what they did then was was so far ahead of their time. Like so many people modeled it after that, but. God, it was it was crazy being a part of that scene. That Larry did fifty thousand dollars in just personal training by him fucking self uh, one month with me. Uh, when we set the record, uh, so the only club that ever did more revenue in a single month uh, was the Austin Club in Texas. Uh, they did. I, I think their theirs was a uh, hundred and hundred ninety two thousand. I think was the in per, in personal training in one month. And uh, we did 187 that month, and Larry did 50 by himself. Mm-hmm. I did 20 something, and then my staff killed it. Right, but man, it was it was so fun working with a guy like that. But I tell you what, you know, Larry and I really good friends. I didn't learn a lot from him, and I would. But that time in my career, I, him and I got together towards the end of my career, and by that time. I had been with Mark and Austin. I've been in years of training and stuff, and I've been a manager already for like six years. So, kind of grown up for sure. And I definitely had refined a lot of my my skills through being mentored by a lot of these talented guys. Well, then I get Larry, and I remember before I worked with Larry, everybody was like, because uh, they found out him and I were going to be together. They're going to put. So at that time, I was in the, killing yeah, yeah, it. Yeah, top fitness guy, top manager. That was know, a, GM. So th- and this was the first time. Well, not the first time, but this is the like one of the first times that they had intentionally done this, right? Where they took him out of a club, me out of a club, both places we are destroying. It. They're like, let's put our top performing FM with our top performing GM, and let's see what we can do in one of our best clubs, Hillsdale. And I came in to replace another guy that was failing, who we all know, yeah. uh, in in the fitness in the fitness business because he wasn't he wasn't cutting it in that club. And we come in, and everybody was like, "You got to find out what Larry is doing," because everyone thought he was cheating. That's the well. Everyone thought he was cheating and mm-hmm. kinking deals and doing shady stuff. To because produce he worked, the, why? Because he worked for me, and they people thought I did that shit. So they're thinking, "Oh, he just taught Larry how to fucking bullshit and cheat, and you know." But he's the real deal. Oh yeah, no, what well, that was what was so crazy was everybody, and I'll never forget this day. I remember my first day of work with him because I was literally like spying on him. Like I was like, I got to, I got to figure this guy out. Because something I prided myself on was I was a chameleon. I was able to work with anybody, and by the end of the day, I could do you. Like I could watch you, Whoa, yeah. and I could, I could see, I could see the way you talk and uh, how you present, how you are with your guests, That's all your I, mannerisms. Uh, open up in the bar. <laughs> and and I could do that. So well, Larry, right away, I have this mentality. I'm gonna mentality. I'm gonna come in and I'm gonna watch everything that he does. And I'm watching him, and I'm waiting for something magical to happen. The dude's closing deals, and but he's he's not saying anything extra fancy. He's not doing anything different out of his tour. He just has like this, I said, he's fucking. He's I don't know how to explain it. He is he's natural. Well, he yeah, he's, he's the most gifted salesperson he would, I've ever he met. He would go into his office, and I remember watching this, and I would listen to him talking to people about. Tra- he didn't know what the fuck he was talking about. Like he did not know shit about training, and I would listen to this stuff. But the way he explained it, it wasn't necessarily wrong. He just he explained it how it made sense to him, and he and he did such a good job at committing. I'll, I'll tell you that's what I did take from him. I, I will say that 
he helped me gain a new level of confidence when we worked together because I'm like, this motherfucker does it. I thought I was like, oh, I was a little, I felt like I didn't know a lot about this. This motherfucker didn't know. And he was the best. He's like, the he guy, was the best at doing what he, he did. He was the guy that would get hugs. People would hug him. Oh, yeah. They'd buy, they'd, oh, I just spent $3,000 on this. Uh, <laughs> yeah. And they'd give him a hug because he would, like, I get, like, he was the in good, huh? only person I ever worked with that ever bumped one of my deals. <laughs> only time that's ever only time one time in my life and the time he did it to me it was the most in my opinion like I remember we, what we used to do is, I got a story about that so what we used to do for what people those that are listening have no fucking clue what I'm talking about so a bump deal would be that I go over to get like approval from my manager I, I sold this person a membership 20 sessions whatever and and then when he actually says goodbye to them and welcomes to the club he sells them more he sells them more <laughs> yeah, yeah like Let's that and that, that that to me you're a punk like that means I didn't do my job well enough of like this person my, my boss gets a hold of it and now he thinks that person can use more self. Bro, that was a power move. Right, it was. So, so I nobody is to... nobody has ever done that to me ever. Yeah, remember I get Larry like seven years later in my career, and the first time it happens to me here. And I'll tell you what, I was showing off when when he did it, which is what made it even crazier. It was I took somebody on? Oh, a, he did a smart move. He did that on. He did that because you showed because you showed off probably. Well, no, it wasn't like that. Larry and I had already been together for a long time. Like we it wasn't we were already close and friends. But it was like I him and I had both agreed like we we're today we needed we had hit we had hit numbers and so we him and I were taking every guest and i would what i would do is i would take them on my tour and it'd be like an hour tour mm. cuz i would do body fat tests on people i'd talk to them for like 15 minutes about their body their deviations i'd break them all down and then i would bring them back and when i would bring them back i would present to larry what they needed this is what this person this is what she needs this is what he needs you know they want to come this many days a week like i'd have it all laid out for him he just had to close the yeah. deal and we are a great team that was the and then i brought a guest and what was so impressive about it was you know i could get somebody i could get you in an hour tour i you would feel close enough to me that you would sh be willing to share like your bank statement with me and say like mm -hmm. this is how much money i have i can invest this much i can do that but i can't do anymore well I would get to that point and I knew that this guy was like, he just lost his job. He was a butcher. Right. They told me everything. They told me their financial situation. So I t remember telling Larry like, hey, just so you know, like when I passed it off to him, this is your situation. So be careful. You might have a hard time getting this. If you have to drop to this. And I, I set it up. TO'd nice. Like, and then it's, it, it, it boom, comes back. So I have a story. And I was like, what? I have a story <laughs> with Larry. So I bumped one of his sales and so Larry bumped it again. <laughs> I remember I literally bumped it and then he bumped it and which is unheard of dude which, is, bump bump. which is which is great because so here's the, here's the funny thing about Malcucci and Larry both of them uh, exceptional at what they do both of them could be each other depending on the circumstance and if I were to analyze myself, I would say I'm I'm a merge of both Marcucci and Larry. And How I, fun it would be to put the two of them on the well, show well, together. Oh my god. If you had if you had a gym that had mm. if it was a grand opening club I'm gonna have and to it was just on. guest after guest coming yeah, in. That would be fun. And you needed speed, you needed fast, you needed that kind of shit, Marcucci would beat uh, Larry. If you had a normal circumstance where it was quality with your customer and all Larry. that stuff Larry all woman. day all yeah. day Larry. Yeah. Yeah. Jason was speed Larry was, and that was like comparing like That's so funny dude that the like how the, and Mark is the one who taught me the speed side of the business right so I had Mark Gucci would have people waiting while he was touring another person and right. he'd, do, he'd do three get, he would do three presentations at the same <laughs> yeah. time he'd have three desks <laughs> occupied yeah. with presentations never seen that before until I worked with <laughs> Mark Gucci. yeah that was a Mark move too that's how he was I mean that was the things that I that's I get my you know, when when I get all crazy here at Mind Pump, when I'm like pushing, wanting more, faster, 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 that's all from him. Like mm. he installed that in me because I had never worked with somebody. See, now once I got to the GM FM level, you know, you know, rotate, I go through all these different other managers I work with, all all had attributes. About, if you're in leadership, like you have attributes about you that set you apart from the average person. So there's great things to take from anybody, right? But then every once in a while, you, you you meet someone who's special. And I remember uh, Mark was probably one of the most special guys that I ever met. And the biggest takeaway that I got from him was 
you know, at his level, you know, when you get to the, the management position, like if there was ever a time that you could let off the reins, that's when you're mostly salaried, you're paid on the percentage of the club. Like if you do a good job of leading, like you could, you could cruise a little bit when you get good at it. And right? there were some managers that did that. Yeah, a lot. And they did. were good at it. A lot. Yeah. Yeah. No, I actually got good at it later in my career. And I, my last four years of my career, I admit this all the time that I was on cruise control. I'm making good. I knew I could hit, I could outperform almost anybody in our region. I could put my feet up and have a great atmosphere in my club. Like it was an awesome, it was work was great but mark man it, there's no way if he was working with me could i do that like because i just felt bad this dude would be the first one in the last one yeah, out grinder he'd work for seven sure. days a week he'd be running three presentations at the same time like you know he would be doing he would be doing the front desk girl's job he would be doing the maintenance guy's job he, i mean he did everything mm -hmm. like he did everything and never stopped he was the one who got me on drinking speed stacks yeah, that was, yeah, yeah. it was the you only passed it on to me right and yeah. then I passed it to John, like, <laughs> it was the <laughs> only <laughs> performance enhancing drugs it's the only way oh I could keep up with this yeah. motherfucker like and it, it, it to the it point contagious man where you, know, you talk about uh, um, I know uh, D who was always you know pushing you by challenging you yeah. like he would Mark would push me that direction with work like oh sleep pussy you know yeah. so like really be and he would always and it'd be trying to beat me to work all the time so that work ethic uh, I I was and I was already I thought a hard worker but man when he when we worked together and it, and he did all this stuff that you didn't want to do dude mm -hmm. and it, and it taught me something about business though well, I mean we we broke records uh, that nobody had ever done in that club for a long time that we were together so you know and it was a it was the shithole club that I talked about the other day. It was the worst, one of the worst clubs in the company. Everybody knew that, and we broke records out of that club. And a lot of that was because of him and his leadership and, and the things that he did. Like, that was nobody wanted to do that. Nobody wanted to be a GM, get in there fucking mopping the floor, get in there making the phone calls for all for all the counselors. Putting flyers on cars putting, and Putting door flyers hangers. on, yeah, that's all the uh, grunt yeah. work. You don't want, when you get into management, you delegate all that shit out, but he knew he could make, he could do it better and he could make a bigger impact. And so he did just it all. Just a workhorse. Oh, just, yeah. I mean, man, it just, and it's, I sometimes I get frustrated here because we, we're doing such big things, right? We've always got these big projects that we each have to handle that we miss sometimes all those little tiny details. And it's like, I want that. Like, God, we got to do that. We got to push that. We got to do those things because those things matter. I've seen what it does when you when you actually put that effort into it. But man, it's a it's a monster. He was he was definitely a major influencer and super talented. I saw him do numbers like the like Larry, like Marcucci, uh, just in his own way, right through work ethic that way. I think finding an environment like that. Uh, I mean, for us at least, uh, is. It was so pivotal in turning us into who we are today, and I think it's uh, it's an important thing to, to really factor in when you're getting a job or you're working or you're mm -hmm. who you're surrounding yourself with. Um, I mean, think about it. Like you work for some of these dynamic companies because that we were in fitness, right? So we were in the industry of fitness, and the dynamic company to work for at the time was Twenty Four Fitness, and the part of or the region or the area of 24 Fitness where you would really find uh, it uh, being performed at that level was the Bay Area, kind of where it started, right? Because it started in the Bay Area. Yeah, so these are all the, the first clubs. Right. Um, I mean, really, that's uh, I mean, that's the idea, right? Like, if you're in tech, gosh, I mean, imagine being a part of you know Google as it's growing or YouTube as it's growing or Netflix as it's growing. All of the things you're going to learn – and that atmosphere, it really disappears when a company gets really large. Oh, yeah. You know? I watched it. You, you know? can't keep it because yeah, I watched all, all these startups it. talk about this process. Man, Do they? And how nostalgic it is for them because they always remember those times where they actually had that interaction, that one-to-one -one interaction with their customers. Um, you know, they spent the time to, you know, work on all these details, whereas, like, you know, they get so removed from that, you know, as growth happens. And then they always try and revisit that and, like, try and, you know, recreate it. And that's something that, like, you know, all these startup companies, it's there, – there is definitely an appeal to that, that energy in the very beginning and, and everybody's – uh, you know, uh, it's so like positive and, and, you know, it, you're doing it for a reason and a purpose. And, um, you know, and I think that, uh, once it, it's tough to kind of keep that, um, that sort of passion and that, that mentality going into like new growth periods in your business. So. Well, that's it's, like, that's it's like different. the book I'm reading, uh, find your why, you know, with, uh, Simon, yeah, find your why. Exactly. Yeah. Like that it's it, yeah, remember always go back to Yeah, it. exactly. Try. And I, and I think that's something that we all, we always try and practice, right. Cause we can get to a point where we're, you know, spread thin and it's, 
it's why I like us talking about how we work out and we work in the business, right? So we work in the business most days because we're in here having to put out content. It takes a lot of effort to put as much content as we do out consistently. So that's a big part of the business. But so, so sometimes we get so consumed by that that we're not handling all the things where the business needs to be going or is currently going or things that have we started that we haven't completed. Like it's really, it's a monster, man, when it gets to that level. And it's, you got always got to remember what the why was and why why we started this and and go back and then like unpack yeah. to that and then work your way back. Yeah, I never I never wanted to work in or manage or lead a bunch of jobs. I never wanted to do that. When I ran clubs, it wasn't people were not showing up to do their job. They were right. showing up because they had a purpose yeah. and they were showing up because uh, they loved it. And when I mean by they, they loved it, they didn't like it always, but they always loved it because sometimes it was hard. Sometimes it sucked. Um, you know, sometimes it was, uh, it was growth, but everybody wanted to be there because they felt, uh, it was bigger than, um, than the job title. You know, I, I would have, you know, kids club attendees would attend meetings with me and we'd talk about certain things. And I used to, I used to go in the kids club and play with the kids and talk to them and hang out and discuss, the, you know, the why, why are you here? Why are you watching the kids in the kids club? And they would always look at me funny, like, because it pays me, you know, 10 bucks an hour. And I'm like, no, like you're actually, you know, a part of something bigger and their parents are working out. And I would really explain this, this concept to them. And, uh, and it, it, you know, it just, it became contagious. And I think working and we were part of an environment that was like that. I didn't, I didn't didn't invent that environment. I was part of it. And I created in the clubs that I ran, but, uh, the growth, and here's the thing too. It was an intense environment. We worked a lot. One year working in that environment is worth five somewhere else in terms of, I'm talking about everything, how tired you were, Mm -hmm. how much energy you put out, how much you grew, how much you learned, all the shit you experienced. Oh, how many people, just simply mathematically, how many people you see? Because you got to think of- Uh, It's pure concentrated traffic. Right. I mean, I think that's any, anybody who works in a place like that and then goes out on their own learns that lesson real quick, Mm -hmm. right? Because you think, you know, you think, oh, I'm going to go, I'm going to start my business and I'm going to get into fitness and I'm going to do this by myself or I I don't want to give this company half of my money, you know, for- you know, not doing anything. I'm doing all the work. I'm training them. Like that's the mentality of a trainer. And then they do that. And then they go, Oh fuck. There's not 2000 people walking through the door every single day in front of me. Boy, what do I kill for having 2000 people that are, that are all trying to hit a goal. And I know they're trying to do hit a goal and they care about health and fitness because they're in the gym, obviously and they're paying yeah. for their membership. How much I would pay for that, those people to be in front of me right now, now that I'm on my own business, running my own business and I don't have that anymore. And all of a sudden that you go like, Oh fuck. <laughs> yeah. This is going to be a little, a little challenging. Completely different monster. That's why it blew me away when the, the direction of the, of the company went, uh, I remember sitting in a meeting and they were showing how they were going to change the direction. And, it was literally like statistics, like we have more gyms than anybody. Our gyms typically have more equipment, better equipment. So all we need to do is charge this price and then we'll take over. Like we're going to dominate. Nobody's going to want to go anywhere else. It's very easy. You should be able to walk into a gym and order your membership like you're looking at a menu at a restaurant. This I remember them saying this and I remember yeah. thinking in my head like, like uh, I'm no. not going to be here very yeah. long no. because you have no idea. You're fully removed. From you have the no idea what you're talking about because I could walk into a gym and within that same month I could, you know, sometimes double the revenue. I mean, many most times at least bump it by 15 to 25%. Sometimes I double it. Now you tell me if how a person walking into a club with and even with a team can double revenue in a month. Is that because the gym changed, or is that because the atmosphere changed and the people inside the gym? So I mean, when they were saying that, and I, I was like, "This is gonna tear. This is gonna destroy everything." Yeah. And sure enough, it changed the whole landscape to where now, I mean, big box gyms are not what they used to be mm-hmm. at all. Now no. it's you know they don't place the same value on things that they were for for a while. There were they were put, putting a lot of money. In personal training and, and you know how to get the best trainers and how to develop that type of stuff, how to keep members and now it's just like now you've got these planet fitness gyms and oh I could all see this other even shit just, I was looking at statistics and how that um you know in home uh usage of of like you know just using like new streaming uh companies provide like like information and fitness uh in home for them to you know have their workouts and 
um, the availability with that. And then Netflix and all these types of businesses that popped up that are providing these streaming services, like it, it's already shifted. Like there's a lot of people that don't own, you know, gym memberships anymore. Well, look how many, staying at home. I, I was, that was a thing. That was something I was surprised when I started looking at our listeners. Yeah. We have a lot of people. How many quite times we get asked about like at home gym? At home. What will I need for maps? What tools? I will think I... it's a lot bigger than people realize. It is. Yeah. It's way. It's definitely more than what I thought. It, I, it, it I, is because I don't like it. You know what I'm saying? So yeah. I'm like, I'm not a, I'm not a big yeah. lift at lift at home person. But a lot of people are. It is. But what we need to consider is uh, so convenience plays a factor, price pays a factor. Of course, equipment in the gym or equipment that you have plays a factor. But the largest factor by far, that will determine whether or not somebody uh, embarks on a lifetime of fitness and consistency with their fitness, is is it's all psychological. It's none of the other things, none of them. Because as many home gyms as there are that people use, there's five times as many that people don't touch. People buy equipment, and this is why the resale value of of home equipment is dirt, is shit, because... You go on Craigslist, you can find anything you want because people buy them and then never use them. Well, this is also and, and there's a gym on every corner well, now. Nowadays. You have direction. This you is know, to you, like I don't know, like so. Peloton is killing it right now. Do you know that company? Mm. Peloton, it's 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 like a you know how like Soul Cycle and all these kind of companies are coming out that um, you know it's a group environment. Everything's there you like go. like cool and all that. Well, they're replicating that group environment feel on your TV now, mm. and and it's killing it. So I. Honestly, yeah, I, I, that has been a dinosaur thing, like where people buy some equipment, just going to gather dust, they're going to put their fucking clothes on it and use it like as a rack. But it's these engaging uh, people, you know, like these these engaging classes you can sign up for real time, yeah. uh, you know, with instructors, and you see other people like virtually in the class, and there's this this group kind of synergy to it that never existed before. Well, look, this is there's wa- more there's more people using cell phones, yeah. Than have a gym membership. The average gym membership, they're cheap now. You can get a gym membership for 20 bucks. Cell phone bill is 100 bucks on average, if not more. It's not cost, it's not convenience. There's a factor that's missing that they have not understood forever. CrossFit grew because of it. All these small studios are growing because yeah, of it. It's culture. It's the culture. It's that. It's that social component, the psychological component. Well, uh, speaking yeah, to the social, at it. they're getting speaking close. to the social component, and we didn't want to do this early on in the business because we didn't like it because it was we attached it to a lot of fitness idiots out there. But there is something, and there's a reason why they're so successful. And I think that we can take a page out of that book with our own business model, and we can make it enhance. We can enhance it a bit, make it better is the challenges and you know i knew we didn't want to do because we were not about this like oh get shredded in 30 days type of bullshit but you know doing some like like a 12 week challenge you know something that's over three months but what that does because why we didn't do it before because i was thinking well that's stupid we don't want to we don't want to market ourselves that way we don't like how people do that but the reality is you know now that we've been doing this for several years and thousands of people have the program lots of people if we statistically know better i know we all know better more than probably 50% of them have fallen off. Mm -hmm. And giving them a cool challenge where they could potentially win money is a cool way to re-motivate them to, you know what, I've been meaning to fucking start my MAPS program. I've been off of it for six months. Shit, they're going to do a challenge the next 12 weeks. I'm going to do this. You know what I'm saying? And then build a community around it. There's people interacting with each other. I I think it's worth us exploring and going this route because now that we've been doing a lot, I didn't like trying to do that at the very beginning because then I didn't want to come off like that. Well, I think sometimes we, and this is true for anything in life, you you see something, you don't like it, something about it, right? Mm-hmm. So you reject it completely. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Right. Um, when, uh, and then you start to come back around and say, okay, there's good parts to it yeah. and there's some stuff I'm that's good to it. I'm just going to have to change this, this other component. That's yeah, right. Because the, the, the challenges have all been fucking cheesed out and bastardized and turned Well, what into- made me think about this was this, right? And so they're just, dishonest, dude. What made yeah. me really think about this was just recently when uh, Ben Pack and I were talking and we're like, we kind of threw it out to each other that we challenge ourselves to get it in our killer shape for Olympia, right? And I thought, you know what? Like, I've been going about my fitness and training, but I haven't been as focused as I am right now, but that's because I threw out a competition with somebody. You got immediate accountability. Even myself, exactly. So even my even myself, who I don't, I, I, so I think that there's a a need there for it. We have a, 
maybe when we had maybe just a couple hundred people when we first started, maybe not so much, like because yeah. most of those people are following it, <laughs> right? But now there's probably there's probably a few thousand people that have maps and are just not using it right now. Yeah. And if we threw like a, a three like a maps challenge, like a twelve week challenge, and we do some sort of a transformation, or we we'll, do we'll something, just immediately be a lot more eyes on your process, right? And and we build a little you know community around it. So maybe there's a separate forum for all the people that are going through the challenge. We can have some fun talking trash back and forth. Just build some cool uh, energy around it, and a little community of people that are going through it. And mm. then we get, and then if we have people register, everyone puts a little money in the pot. We have a huge cash prize win out afterwards. Yeah. Like, the, the way I look at it for me, at least is if it, if it can get people introduced into, uh, fitness, um, and then we do the rest where we can, you know, work on that psychological piece. Hopefully they get, they listen to the podcast and, you know, they, it becomes a part of their life. Like it gives us a better opportunity to be able to make that kind of an impact. Mm -hmm. Then, to me, uh, it's it's a no brainer. Yeah, I think it's cool. I definitely think we should we should do that for sure. Check this out: thirty days of coaching available by Mind Pump, and it's available for free. All you gotta do is go to mindpumpmedia.com, register yourself, and you'll get thirty days worth of fitness information. You'll get uh, episodes uh, on particular top topics like carbohydrates, proteins, fats. Uh, muscle building, fat loss, meditation, wellness, whatever, and we'll timestamp them so you can actually listen to the section that talks about that specific topic along with more information that goes into greater detail on that topic. It's free, so uh, do it, mindpumpmedia.com. Also, you can find us on Instagram. Our page is mindpumpmedia. My personal page is Mind Pump Sal. Adam is Mind Pump Adam, and Justin is Mind Pump Justin. Thank you for listening to Mind Pump. If your goal is to build and shape your body, dramatically improve your health and energy, and maximize your overall performance, check out our discounted RGB Super Bundle at MindPumpMedia.com. The RGB Super Bundle includes Maps Anabolic, Maps Performance, and Maps Aesthetic. Nine months of phased expert exercise programming designed by Sal, Adam, and Justin to systematically transform the way your body looks, feels, and performs. With detailed workout blueprints and over 200 videos, the RGB Super Bundle is like having Sal, Adam, and Justin as your own personal trainers, but at a fraction of the price. The RGB Super Bundle has a full 30-day money-back guarantee, and you can get it now plus other valuable free resources at mindpumpmedia.com. If you enjoy this show, please share the love by leaving us a five-star rating and review on iTunes and by introducing Mind Pump to your friends and family. We thank you for your support, and until next time, this is Mind Pump.